Texas. The second biggest state in the country, home to many major cities including Houston, Dallas-Fort Worth, San Antonio, Austin, and El Paso, just to name a few. Texas is home to an extensive system of highways, with the most miles of interstate of any state in the country. But today we actually aren't talking about the interstate system, but instead a peculiar group of roads called farm-to-market or ranch-to-market roads, a sort of secondary state highway road only majorly found in this state. Before that though, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. We make geography content like this every week. So if that's the kind of stuff you enjoy, click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future uploads. I really appreciate it and helps me out a ton. Thank you. So let's turn our attention to Texas, and first tell you why FM roads are so interesting. So most states have a federally funded U.S. highways and interstates, and then the state highway system on a lower level. If we go even farther down though, we find a secondary state highway group called Farm to Market Roads, just in Texas. So a Farm to Market Road is simply a lesser state highway, still funded and ran by the state. There are only a few minor differences between an FM road and a state highway that I'll go over momentarily. But simply, a farm-to-market road has one historical purpose, to connect rural and agricultural areas up to market towns. That was the original purpose it served when the system was originally created. With Texas being such a big and largely empty state, there's just so much area to cover. And with the importance of agriculture, farming, and ranching in the state, roads to kind of cover all that empty area and easily bring these economically important areas to a market town was needed. Now, as for the difference between FM roads and state highways, there's only one noticeable change, found within urban areas. So, if a city has over 50,000 residents, FM roads located within the boundaries are not eligible for state funding. While, on the other hand, state highways are able to get funded within the cities. This actually helps the purpose of FM roads, because it forces the city to handle funding on their roads, giving the state more ability to focus on the rural connector roads that wouldn't be able to afford construction costs otherwise. It's actually a smart system. So why do they exist? Well, to figure that out, we need to go through the history of the system and go back through everything that has happened and brought it to where we are now. Starting back in 1937, during the Great Depression, when the first farm-to-market road was completed. This road connected Mount Enterprise to the former community of Shiloh in Rusk County. This is present-day Texas 315. The first officially designated FM road was FM1 in San Augustine County in 1941 to connect Pineland to an important sawmill belonging to the Temple Lumber Company. This is how most of the routes came to be, a point of interest in the more rural parts of the state were connected up to a market city. Texas realized this was actually a great system, so in 1945, the Highway Commission launched a three-year program which would construct 7,205 miles of farm-to-market roads with the costs equally shared by the state and federal government. As the program continued to grow, legislators from rural areas started to try extra hard to get FM roads in their area, since they were helping the economy a lot. The program then continued to gain popularity, and with the need to connect the vast, isolated central and western parts of the state, Texas realized they would need even more expansion of their project. So in 1949, the state passed the Colson Briscoe Act, this legislation would appropriate funding for the official creation of an extensive system of secondary state roads to connect access to the rural areas of the state and to allow farmers and ranchers to transport their goods to a market. The act served a whole $15 million per year, plus one cent per gallon of gasoline sold in the state for local highway construction. It was an incredibly smart system. In 1957, there were more than 31,000 miles of FM roads, and the state yet again upped the funding this time to $23 million per year. As the years went on, more and more roads were built, with another 15,000 miles of farm-to-market roads being constructed. So, although that's how FM roads came to be, it's not really what they're used for anymore. Travel from farm to markets have become a lot less important, and now they do just work as a sort of secondary state highway. Some FM roads are in completely urban areas, with no remnant of the farm they were originally built for. In 1995, Texas tried to rename these roads to urban roads, though residents opposed the effort, with it apparently being un-Texan, and not worth the cost of new signs for such a basic change. It did go into effect in some places, but most signs were not changed, and overall the idea did not go over well. In 2018, the urban road system was cancelled officially, and all roads on the system were reverted back to their previous designations. I also feel like ranch to market roads should be mentioned, because it was another part of the FM road system. It serves the same purpose to connect a ranch to a market, and they're found in the west central part of the state more commonly. There isn't really a difference anymore, especially with the historical purpose of the roads being lost. Present day though, farm to market roads are extremely common. 
They account for over half the mileage maintained by the Texas DOT. The longest route is 139 miles from south of Amarillo to near Brownfield. FM1 is located near the Pedernales River, around the former ranch home of President Lyndon B. Johnson. The most heavily traveled is Westheimer Road in Houston, one of the more urban routes I was talking about earlier, which carries 61,000 cars per day. It can go anywhere from that to just 10 cars per day on FM2167, which leads to a Boy Scout camp near Silverton. All these roads have different, unique historical uses that a lot of the time have been lost. Signs designating a farm to market or ranch to market road are a black square background containing a white shape of the state of Texas with the words farm road or ranch road appearing in white text on the background and the route number in black text within the shape of Texas. Guide signs, the large green signs usually found along highways in the United States, designating these roads use a simple white rectangle with the abbreviation FM or RM and the route number appearing below the abbreviation in black text. If you go to Texas or you're in Texas, you're going to see FM roads. There are signs all over, and something I thought was actually pretty funny is that Texas has by far the most road signs of any state in the country. Before we end, I wanted to go over the other states that also have farm-to-market roads, because even though Texas is the only state to use them as a major highway system, and has by far the most miles, there are a few other states that use the same historical idea. Iowa was one of them, with their FM roads being under county jurisdiction, but also being eligible for state aid from a dedicated fund. Missouri uses a similar state-operated system of farm-to-market roads, called Missouri Supplemental Roads, going with a single and double-letter identification system but still serving the same purpose. Louisiana has its own system using the ABC system of classification, A being primary, B being secondary, and C being farm to market, with around a quarter of these highways being C. Ohio is the final state to use farm to market roads, this time also maintained by the state, but built only to the county road standards. This seems like the second most extensive FM road system, with the state putting actual money into improving the roadways and keeping it actually really good. In general though, I think the historical idea of the FM road system has been lost to time. But it's still an interesting story and they serve a new purpose as just being a relatively well-maintained group of rural roads throughout the state of Texas. I think they're actually very important and the state should take pride in them. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, Don DeShirlia, Darkbird, Obigrad, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Uncouver, Wolfling73, Snyder Schwein, Florida Jake, Philip Gertz, Somnum Woods, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, KMS, 162, Haystack, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hasev the Wolf, Jake Holloway, JL Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, and Bryzen. I appreciate you all so much. You help out the channel a ton. If you want to become a channel member, the link is down in the description below. I really appreciate it. It does just help me out as a person. It's all going into my savings for like college and a car and stuff. So if you really appreciate the content, that's the best way to just help me out. Thank you.